Hey, it's Ollie, and in this video, I want to talk about uh, foreign alphabets and how you can cope with learning an alphabet that's different from, from your own. Now, I've come across a lot of people before who have uh, been learning languages with different alphabets and have kind of got a bit put off by learning it. That The task of learning the alphabet has seemed a bit too much and they've, they've put it off and they've put it off and they've come to regret it in the end because they haven't been able to read the language. Now, there are... I've only learned a certain number of different alphabets. There are many more alphabets that I haven't learned, so I, I, I'm not sure that I can... Uh, the, the advice I'm about to give is, a, is like across the board uh, accurate and applies to every language. But nevertheless, what I've found is that foreign alphabets tend to be, be coming into kind of two different categories. The first are the alphabets such as Arabic or Greek, where you've got a relatively small number of, um, of, of new letters to learn. Um, Arabic is more or less the same as, as English. I think it has two, le two letters fewer than English. Uh, you have um, the Japanese hiragana or katakana, for example, where I think it's 48, I believe, um, characters in each. Now, the thing is, as difficult as it may seem at first sight, learning an alphabet with less than 50, 50 letters in is not really that hard. It's the kind of thing you can do in a weekend if you really want to. And you know, you can look for all these crazy tricks and methods for remembering them. But really, when I've learned different alphabets in the past, I've found that the only way, that, like by far, the most effective, simple way of doing it is to simply sit down. Like say to yourself, right, I'm going to sit down and learn this alphabet now, and I'm not going to get up until I've learned it. And what you'll find is an, Arabic, an alphabet like Arabic, for example, you can learn it in a few hours. Now, you might not be able to write it very, very beautifully, um, and you might not be able to, to, re to, to read everything instantly, but you can learn the, basic, the basics of an alphabet like like Arabic within a, a few hours and certainly within a few days and then <coughs> excuse me and, and, and then an alphabet like like the uh, the hiragana for example in Japanese uh, you know it doesn't take that long if you kind of had this attitude, this can do attitude of right I'm just going to sit down and learn it and that's probably copying it out hundreds of times um, you know rote memorization is probably the best way to learn an alphabet so I, I would always caution people against thinking that it's harder than it is or harder than it needs to be you know, learn to write, learn, learn, learn to recognize the different letters, l learn to write them out definitely because writing them out is, uh, it kind of adds, it's not that you add in these different learning modes. You're not just, it's not just visual, but it's also kinesthetic and definitely learn to pronounce the, the letters as well. Again, I mean, it might take you a few days. You're going to forget some along the way. You're going to need to go back to it and back to it. But within the space of a week or so, you can have this alphabet pretty much memorized. And then what happens is over the course of the next two or three months, as you, sit, as you go about reading in the language, uh, at first it will be a real pain, it'll be hard, you'll think you're, there's something wrong with you, but you will quickly find within the space of a couple of months that reading in the alphabet becomes normal. And as long as you do that from the beginning and you kind of dispense with the, with, with the English as quickly as possible, then you, are gonna, you, know, you will learn the alphabet quickly. Uh, with the right attitude, there's no question. Now, that's the first class of alphabet. There is a different class of alphabet, or well, I guess writing system might be a better, a better, a better phrase to use, uh, which uh, is most visible, I think, in Asian languages. And so in Japanese and in Chinese, for example, you have Chinese characters. Now, um, I know in Japanese, the, the official government number of kanji, as they call them, that you need to learn is something like it keeps changing, but it's something like 2,112 or something like that. Um, and that's quite a lot. Not as many, though, as in Chinese, where you have something like 10,000 um, to learn, probably fewer to be functional in the language. But each of those Chinese characters is extremely complicated, especially from a, from a Western point of view. And although it's true that there are methods you can use to break them down, identify the radicals and, you know, learn and speed up the process of learning them nevertheless learning to read and write Chinese characters is a process that will take you years um, even with shortcuts you know it's a long-term study and um, you know interestingly I um, I know quite a few people who have reached a very high level of proficiency in languages like Japanese and in Chinese and Cantonese and other languages that use Chinese characters and without exception they will tell you that you, well, they would advise you not to learn Chinese characters at the beginning simply because it's such a lot of work, you'll find yourself dedicating the, f the first however long, couple of years of your study to learning these Chinese characters and at the expense of your speaking. 
Because if you imagine that you spend, say, an hour a day or two hours a day learning Chinese characters, and let's say even within a year you've learnt uh, most of the ones that you need, which would be a, an impressive feat. De doable, but you know, nevertheless, you've then spent a year learning these characters that you don't actually know how to use. And for most people, speaking is, is what they want to do. And so uh, in that situation, the, the advice that of, of, the, of the people who I follow and respect is not to learn Chinese characters at the beginning. And that's the advice that I'm following at the moment myself, now learning, learning, um, learning Cantonese. Um, so I think with the question of alphabets, you've got to look at the question, you've got to look at it from a, a practical perspective of can you learn this alphabet relatively quickly? And you know, with a language like Greek, uh, Russian, um, Arabic, Korean, then you can learn it quickly. So you know, knuckle down, make a big pot of tea, and just you know, write it out, start to learn it, and memorize it. There's, that's you know, you will thank yourself for it in the in the in, in the long term. And then with the with those languages, with the the more the, the much larger, more complex alphabets, it is probably best, assuming that you that your main aim is to speak the language and to socialize. It's probably best to delay that learning of the of the writing system until later on, so that you can um, you can take advantage of the time that you've got to actually learn to speak the language, <coughs> which does not uh, rely on you being able to read and write. All right, controversial perhaps, but that's my view on the on writing systems. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you next time.